Have you got more than one Mac? If you have, I can show you how to use both of the Macs to increase your efficiency and productivity utilizing your old and perhaps your new Mac. My name's Phil Binks. Screen sharing is built into the Mac. It's easy to do and I'll show you how. I'll show you how I use it with my Macs for simple file sharing and load sharing, which means you can use your powerful Mac just for the intensive applications that you might use, such as video editing or photo editing. And then you can use your less powered Mac for things like mail, maybe our office applications, and perhaps web browsing. This means that you can be much more efficient and that you're utilizing the efficiency of having two or more machines. I'll take you through how to do this step by step and make it very easy for you to get the most out of your multiple Mac home network. In order for this to work, you'll need three basic things. One, that your Macs are all on the same network, and that can be Wi Fi or Ethernet. Number two is that you need to have administrator rights and user login details for the Macs that you want to share the screens of. And three, you've simply got the time to follow these simple instructions that I'll show you. Okay, let's get over to it. So on the Macs that you want to share the screens of, you'll need to go to the Finder window. In the Finder window, the first place that we're going to go to is the System Preferences. Click to open System Preferences. And there you'll find a Sharing button. Depending on the age of your Mac and the operating system, this may be in a slightly different place, but this is what we're trying to look for. Click on the Sharing button. And it's important that you have two of the boxes ticked. The two important ones are the screen sharing and for what we want to really do to make this a real power system, we need to have file sharing open as well. You'll notice that your Mac's name appears here and it will tell you that computers on your local network can access your Mac using a particular name normally the name with hyphens separating any spaces. Once you've done that, we can close down the sharing window and we can go back to the finder and instead of going to system preferences this time, we need to go to the finder preferences. Click on that. In the finder preferences window, you'll find that there are lots of options you can have any of these ticked that you like. Uh, that doesn't affect what we're going to do. What will affect what we're going to do is that you need to make sure that this Bonjour Computers line is ticked there. What I'll do, I'll just bring a finder window into the dialog box so you can see it. What you'll see is a option here that says under locations, it'll say network. That's only if you've got the Bonjour computers part ticked. Watch if I turn that off, you'll see that the network option disappears. If I turn it back on again, it may take a second or two, but it comes back in the end. This is the important bit. You can have any of the other things turned on as you wish to show any other features uh, in the finder, but I've kept this as small as possible so that you can just follow what we're trying to do. So once you've done that, what we can do is we can click on this network button. And that should show you a number of different ways of seeing your networked computers, the ones that exist on your network. Here I've got several things, but I've got two particular Macs that I want to share the screens of. So let's choose this first one here, the MacBook 16 Pro. All I need to do now is double click that icon. And magically we see a button that says share screen. If I then click on the share screen,
what happens is it comes up with what is a, your username and password for that particular Mac. It may be the same username and password that you use on all of your Macs. I do that to keep it easy for myself. Click on the sign in and then we see this connecting and automatically we get the screen of my MacBook 16 inch. So I can enter my password to wake it up and here I am now with a full screen view of my 16 inch MacBook on my iMac. My 16 inch MacBook could have been anywhere in the building so long as it's on the same network. I don't have to be looking at it, but it happens to be just up here. If you look in my little icon here, over my right shoulder and to the left of my little inset, that's the screen there. I can now do anything I want to on that Mac. I can run applications, open files, folders, open mail, anything at all is possible because I've got now full control of the cursor and if I just for instance open the App Store, there's the App Store opening up and scrolling through and it's very easy to see and it's almost immediate, there's hardly any lag whatsoever across the network, giving me full control and a full view of that particular Mac. So let's think of some other ways this might help you. You might have a much more powerful Mac that you're working on now and you want to keep the resources for that Mac like the RAM and the CPU and the GPU all working for something let's say like video editing. But you don't want to tie up those resources with email, office applications, web browsing. Why don't you do that on the other Mac? That leaves your main Mac to do all the heavy lifting work of video editing whilst you can use the power that the other Mac has and it doesn't use the resources that is going to slow you down whilst you're doing your main work. And it's very easy to flip from one screen to another to make yourself incredibly efficient. So that's not all, of course. Um, you might have more than one or two Macs on your network. Behind me, you can see I've got one here, which we are now linked to. What if I want to link to this older Mac that's running High Sierra? Not a problem at all. Let's get into doing that, just to run through this one more time. Up in the corner, I go to the Network button. And this now shows me my other Mac, which is called Phil's MacBook Pro. And I simply double click. We just want to share screen because it gives us all of this fantastic functionality. Click on share screen. A window comes up and says, what's your username and password? So I'll just log in. Be good if I could spell my own name. And here we are. So now I've got my MacBook 16 inch, the big screen, and a MacBook Pro 15 inch on the small screen. This one is running High Sierra. There we are. And this one is running the latest Catalina. I can drag files from one Mac screen to the other or one folder to the other between these three connected Macs. I can put each screen on a space on my main Mac and simply move between one screen and the other. Let's do that. I can build myself another desktop and now I can put this one into desktop 3 and this one is in desktop one and let's just close these down so now I have a screen with my Catalina on it 
I can move over to my main Mac and I can then move over to another one which has got my MacBook Pro. If I wanted to be a bit neater about this, so my uh, MacBook Pro, the older one, the 15 inches now on the left hand side of these spaces, the newer MacBook Pro, 16 inches up there, and my real desktop is on the right hand side. Slide from one to the other to the other and back and I have full operation of all of these and I can do anything I want with any of the Macs and I haven't had to go behind me to make any of these work that way and now as I promised there's one final special piece of magic that I'd like to show you you can see behind me that both screens are on this green screen if I just sit to one side and bring up the about this Mac we can see that appear behind me in the corner but what about if I close the screen what about if I do it to the 16 inch Mac 2 you notice that we still have full operation of the Mac even though the lid is closed so we can use that Mac's operating system, GPU, CPU, all of its power. So I don't need to have either of the Mac screens lifted in order to be able to use any of the functionality that those Macs have. This is a great power saver. And remember the other great thing is that if I'm doing things on one of the other Macs, it is not using the resources of my main Mac leaving me all of the power on my main Mac to do my photo or video editing as I want. So there we have it. I hope that that's been useful for you and you can use some of the power tips that I've shown you today to really enhance the way that your office efficiency will work and it may be even allow you to bring back to life an old Mac that you thought was not going to be used again. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding many more power tips, many more things that will help you get more efficiency out of your Mac and your home office setup.